and this is why I need an apron because all of this mess would be on my skirt otherwise okay so this is the material that I have um, for two aprons I have two meters of it so what I'm going to do is fold it in half and then cut it in half and then whatever I have I shall use each of those to make the actual aprons and one of the fun things about cotton of course is that cutting it on the straight grain you can do if you've got good eyesight or you can do it the fun way make a notch so I've measured halfway along and then just tear it so it tears quite easily along the grain so that is one half of my apron or one apron and that is another apron this apron is really really simple to make you take your one meter of fabric and you just want to even it up to make sure that it is perfectly rectangular. So if you put the torn section together, or the bit that you know is straight on the straight grain together, and fold it in half along the selvage, you'll see that there's one bit that overlaps the other. So if you go slightly further in than the overlap, and put a little bit, just enough to tear it. Now here I've torn a little bit off, it's not done enough. It's not gone all the way along the fabric, so I've clearly not given it enough to tear off. That's not a problem. About half an inch, snip and rip. Oh, love that sound. <laughs> So now we should have a rectangular piece. Check the length to make sure you should have about 80 centimeters for your the length of your apron. And then the waistband I've decided to do three inches, which should give me a good inch or so width of waistband, because of course you've got a little overlap for the seaming of it. Cut at the three inch and at the six inch, and off you go. It really is such a simple garment to make. So then you've got the main body of the apron and the waistband ready for sewing. So first join your two halves of waistband together. And set them aside. Now when you tear fabric of course it can look a little alarming but all of this is just going to get tucked under. And you can see that the fabric can wrinkle a little bit and it, it can want to roll over and that's just because you've you've deformed the the threads into a, a non horizontal vertical position all of this is going to get tucked under when i sew it anyway now i've pinned this over with one inch because i don't need too wide of a of a hem at the bottom of the skirt I'm going to sew along this section and then what I will do is I will tuck this under and sew again. So I do not have any matching thread. I cannot be bothered to find some matching thread. Oh, I might have upstairs actually. Let me go and look. I've got this grey thread. So you see on the right I've got this grey thread that actually matches quite nicely. Grey thread is, is a good good one to have in your arsenal because if you have a piece of material 
that you can't match the colour to or if you, you know, you just want to do something quickly. If you find grey thread that matches the sort of the, the tone, um, the brightness of it, it works quite nicely. So you can see it's it's actually sort of fades in quite nicely, whereas the white here stands out quite clearly. Now this, of course, is definitely because I wanted to show you guys and not because I couldn't be bothered to change the bobbin thread. So I've hemmed both of my um, aprons. Now what I'm doing is I'm just gathering the top. So I've put a, a running stitch along and I've, I've done them quite large because it is only an apron. I'm not too fussed about having perfectly tiny little pleats. So I've done that all the way along the top of one of them and marked the centre. So what I'm going to do now is attach that to the waistband and um, get it all gathered up quite nice and neatly. Before you gather the section, find the centre point and put a pin there. Um, put a pin in the ends and then centre point of the half you've just done and then centre point of the other halves um, until you get to a point where you've got a small section just of a few inches where you're just going to gather that small section and this way when you're doing the gathers you don't have to do it by eye and try and work out okay is this bit equal to this bit and equal to that bit it's a lot simpler just to do that little bit of preparation i learned that the hard way i'm doing a bit of a, an experiment here where i'm sewing with the gathers uppermost first right well that's one of them and you can see when you've got particularly gathers um the waistband here is sort of puckered and and things like that that's not really a problem but obviously if that was on the top then i would be able to see that and i'd be able to correct that as i'm going along and now i'm going to do it with the gathers lowermost to see what if any difference that gives to the finished article this is the traditional way right then let's have a look at you the difference I felt between the two was this took longer to put through the machine and I had to be more particular in watching it, which is kind of why it took, took longer. Whereas this one, I couldn't see what was going on. So, you know, if something was out of place or wrong, you wouldn't necessarily know until you took the piece out of the machine. But it went through a lot smoother. And whereas here you have a bit of puckering on the waistband, I can't see any of that along this. I'm not very good at gathering, so any help I can get is um, gratefully received. Right, the next step is to press the waistband over so I need to get the iron out and then fold it over and press that. So we will be tucking this bit under, tucking this edge under, ironing it, folding it over, ironing it and then whip stitching it down by hand. And we should have two aprons done. And I need to find that pin that fell on the floor. Otherwise, I shall find it another way. There. there you are, you little tyke. Right. Okay, so I've pressed this over and then sewn it. This is the, the waistband. Um, but I haven't sewn it to the actual apron itself, so that's the next step is just to whip stitch all of that down. So I'm just doing the sewing the, the band on now um, and you can see I'm not bothering to be particularly precise. I am literally just whip st stitching it down without too much ado. 
if you do want to be really precise and, and make it so that this doesn't show, there is a way of doing it, which I've just been doing over the last couple of inches here. So it takes longer, which is why I'm not bothering. Put it in at the fold and it helps if you wiggle the needle a bit. Can you see the needle moving there? And then rotate it round so that you've just caught a little bit of the thread and come out at the fold again. And then pick up one of the pleats there and just repeat. And you can make these stitches as tiny as you like, or as big as you like really, within reason. Find where the stitches come out, catch a, a little pleaty um, gather there, and then go straight back in to the band. Catch a little gather, go straight back in to the band. And if you did that all the way along, that's the finish you'd get on the inside and that's the finish you'd get on the outside. So it's really nice and crisp and neat and perfect. But as you've seen, it takes longer, so I'm doing it this way because I'm lazy. Well, this is apron number one, and I've already put on apron number two. So they're quite, quite handy little things just to have around. And they do protect the skirt, because this, while I can wash this, um, I'd rather not have to wash it too often because it is wool. Um, so this is just here to protect the skirt as required. So this one is the one that I sewed with the um, gathering uppermost on the sewing machine. And this one is the one I sewed with the gathering lowermost on the sewing machine. And you can see, really, I can't tell any difference. I've got, I've got the tapes nice and long, so they go all the way around, and then I can tie them in front, which just means that it's nice and quick to put on, and nice and quick to take off as well. Now, I wouldn't normally wear two aprons, so now I have one to wash, And one to wear. I may consider putting pockets in um, and I probably have them from the waistband or something or I may have separate pockets that I then tie on later um, but that does seem a little bit too pernickety so perhaps perhaps I won't bother. There we go.